This is a short introduction to what programming is. So inside of your computer, there is a CPU, Central Processing Unit. That is the computer. And what it does is run your programs. So if you're on a Windows PC, you probably have a CPU either from Intel or AMD. If you're on a newer Mac, you probably have a, a CPU from Apple itself, like an M1 or M2. So what a program is on your computer is a set of instructions that tells the CPU what to do. So there's a lot of other terms for a program on your computer. Other terms are application or app or software. And a compiled program that's in the native language for your CPU, sometimes they might call those an executable or even a binary. Okay, so the CPU's native language is called machine language. And each CPU has a little different uh, machine language. So the an executable program on your computer is in machine language. Okay, so just for example, uh, here is, I'm on Windows, here's a folder that I've created for this video, and here is an executable program right here, uh, Minesweeper. And so that is in machine language. If I double click it, it opens up the Minesweeper program here. Okay, so, and now one thing to uh, remember is that machine language is specific for that CPU and the operating system, which would call a platform. So we have different platforms. We have, you could be on a Windows computer, you know, running an Intel or AMD CPU. You could be on a Mac computer running their own CPUs, uh, which Mac computers used to run Intel CPUs, but now they've switched them to their own CPUs. Uh, other platforms are your iPhone, your Android, an uh, Xbox, uh, even your TV now that you load apps on would be a different platform. Okay, but anyway, an executable program is in machine language for a specific platform. So this executable uh, Minesweeper program here, if I take it to a Mac computer, it will not run. So this will only run on a Windows computer. Okay, so um, if you were to actually program in machine language, it's very tedious. You must write the instructions using binary or hexadecimal, which is a uh, just a short shorter way of writing binary. Uh, so to make programming in machine language a little bit easier, assembly language was created, where you can you don't have to use binary. You can write the instructions that are a little easier to read. Okay, but if you program in machine or assembly language, it's considered very low level because you're actually working with the CPU. Uh, you're moving data around the CPU and to and from memory. So it's very tedious, but it is very, very fast. So therefore, higher la level languages were created to make programming easier. And so these languages are user oriented instead of machine oriented. So here's a list of quite a few of the popular high level languages, but there's uh, virtually countless more high level languages. And um, so when you program, you write the source code using the language of choice right here. And so then to run the program, well, some languages have to be compiled to an executable, just like the executable we just looked at, which is in machine language for running, while other languages are interpreted and executed line by line by a virtual machine. So a lot of terminology you should become familiar with here. Whereas other languages are both compiled and interpreted. You compile to an intermediate format called a bytecode, and then that's interpreted by a virtual machine. And so to demonstrate that, 
I have created a source code for a few different languages here and we're going to uh, execute each one of these. Okay, so here I've created a Hello World program, which just prints Hello World to the screen in C++. I've created one in a JavaScript, which is goes within an HTML file. I've created a program using Java and a program using Python. Okay, so let's look at each one of those programs. Let's start with the C++. So here I'm using a editor called VS Code and it's very popular and so here we can look at the source code for each one of these programs. Here is C++ and I'm not going to go into how the source code works, just kind of how the language works, how you write the source code and then you compile it. So C++ is usually compiled to an executable before it can run. So we don't run, we don't usually run this source code without compiling it. So I'm going to compile it. I'm going to open up uh, my command prompt here. And so I'm just going to uh, compile it. A popular compiler is the G++ compiler. So I'm going to compile hello.cpp. And what you'll notice is that over here a new file was created, an executable file. Okay, and so now I can just run it. I can just type A, which will run the A.executable. And so now it outputs hello world from C++, 3 plus 5 is equal to 8. Okay, so there, so C++ is usually compiled. And now compiled languages, which compile to an executable, are usually the fastest languages. That's why C++ is used for creating things like your operating system, Microsoft Office, and even the interpreters for other languages. Uh, and once again, this compiled program right here, a.exe that was created right here, uh, this will only run on a Windows computer. It is platform dependent. We can't take that to a, a Mac computer and run. It would have your source code would have to be recompiled on a Mac computer or another uh, platform before it can run. Okay, so now let's look at uh, HTML. Okay, so here is our uh, hello.html file. And so this is in JavaScript. And so JavaScript language is an interpreted language. And once again, we put it in an HTML web page to run. And so your the interpreter is a program that executes this code line by line. And so we would just call it the JavaScript uh, virtual machine or interpreter and that is built into your web browser. So if I just double click on this HTML file, it's going to launch a web page in which in your default web browser and it's going to run this program right here. And so again, this was interpreted. This was run line by line. It was not converted to an executable before running. Now, one big advantage over an interpreted language is platform independence. So this program right here, we don't have to create an executable for each platform. So this same web page can be run on a Windows, on a Mac, on an iPhone, or an Android. Okay, so now let's look at Java. So here is a hello world in Java. And so this one is has elements of being compiled and interpreted. Okay, so uh, which is makes it kind of unique in the way it works. So uh, what we we first compile the Java program. And to do that, I use the Java's compiler, Java C hello dot java so we're compiling this hello dot java file okay and so if you look over here it created a new file called hello dot class now this file is considered to be byte code 
Okay, so bytecode is a kind of a generic machine language. It's not an EXE, but it is in kind of a generic uh, machine language that can be run on any platform. As long as you have the Java Virtual Machine installed, which is probably already installed on your computer because Java is very popular. So we can run this and uh, using the Java Virtual Machine. And to do that, I just type Java hello, and that will execute the hello.class file using the Java Virtual Machine. And so it runs hello world from Java. So this, once again, this is pretty unique in that you can compile it to this .class file. Then we can take this .class file to a Mac and it will run just the same as it does here. Okay, so now let's look at Python. Okay, so here is a Hello World uh, source code in Python. And this file right here, hello.py. And now Python, uh, by default, uh, once again, it's, it's both compiled and interpreted. In that it compiles to a bytecode, but the bytecode, you won't see it show up right here. The bytecode is just stored in memory. And then it's executed, uh, you know, line by line. So, or instruction by instruction, actually. Okay, so to run the Python, I just type Python, and then the name of the files, which is hello.py. And so once again, it compiled very quickly it compiled my source code to the python uh to the byte to the byte code for python and then the python virtual machine executed this source code right here anyway this was just kind of an introduction to how some different programming languages work and have a great day